Well, let's turn to our next guest for some reaction to this vote. Joining us now is Wedbush Securities Managing Director David Nierengarten, who joins us here on set. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Now, you don't cover SREPTA specifically, but the fact that we've seen this development, how does it speak to what we're seeing in gene therapy more broadly and sort of the uh, regulatory uh, environment? Yeah, first of all, it was a, obviously a bit of a surprise, judging from the market reaction. Uh, you know, a lot of people had some skepticism around the FDA's uh, panel a vote uh, as a, um, before when the briefing documents came out there were a lot of you know significant questions that FDA raised uh, so it was a, a positive surprise that the panel panel voted in favor uh, and obviously it should lift the uh, gene therapy sector genetic medicine sector more broadly uh, we saw some gene editing companies rally along with uh, Sarepta this morning or this trading day and uh, we do expect that that should uh, lead to an approval on May 29th, and I think that would uh, help not only the gene therapy sector, but also put uh, Sarepta probably in, again, the, the target for an acquisition from a, a larger pharma. So let's talk a little bit about that, because we, ha we had a couple of big multi, multi-billion dollar deals announced today, but, but in general, looking at biotech specifically, mm -hmm. it's been very busy for deal making. It has. Uh, it Year to date, there's over $70 billion of announced acquisitions. And last year, for the entire year, there was under $70 billion, just under $70 billion, but under $70 billion. And so I think this really points to a bottom for the small mid-cap sector. Uh, it, obviously, it's an attractive valuation for acquirers at this point. And so I think that they are, the acquisitions will continue. They have been robust year to date, and, uh, and I think they should continue uh, for the rest of the year. How much of that is just because capital yep. is harder to come by now, <laughs> and yeah. some companies with good technology, good prospects, yep. are just running out of runway, yeah. and so if investors have a sense of which companies those might be, they might do well. Yeah, it, that's an interesting point. The companies, though, that have tended to be acquired lately are later stage or they, they should have less of a challenge at, at finding capital. They're commercial or they have a drug that's about to be approved. And so those companies actually have tended to have been able to find capital um, and those are, have been the ones that have been acquired by the larger companies. So I think what it does though is show that the valuations are more in line with what pharma thinks they should be. And then uh, it should help improve the risk appetite for investors as they start seeing some of these later stage companies go, go into the pharma hands. So who do you think gets taken out? My next uh, pick is Argenix, ARGX. It's a later stage. It's commercial. Uh, they've been launching a drug called Vivgart into a rare disease called myasthenia gravis. It's a neuromuscular disease. Uh, it's had a great launch so far. Uh, it did $400 million last year. We think it can do over a billion dollars this year. Uh, and importantly, they have multiple clinical trials set up to expand the indication beyond myasthenia gravis with a key data for a disease called CIDP coming out in July. Any other so, names to watch? Uh, I think there are several other um, smaller uh, cap biotechs that could be interesting. One is uh, Blueprint Medicines. They are a, a, also a commercial name. They're commercializing a drug called Avakit. Uh, and they have an important uh, PDUFA date for an additional indication, again, talking about expanding these uh, commercial opportunities uh, coming up on uh, May, 20, uh, May 24th. David uh, Nierengarten, thanks for joining us here. Thank you. Thanks for having me.